So when you are talking about beyond internet connectivity, if you want to have a restricted access to certain servers, say my private servers are there, but I don't want to have them connecting to the internet, but I still want to administer them. How do I connect to it? Or the other use cases, how do I connect to other VPCs that might be inside our region? Remember, VPCs are isolated and they are very secure by default. The traffic doesn't go out unless I configure my routing tables. So how do I send my traffic to another VPC to which I want to collaborate? He might be my partner or client or consultant, but I want to connect to them. So that is another use case. Then the final common use case with VPCs is connecting to your corporate network. So we'll go ahead and see how to do some of them. So the first thing is natting. If you have a private subnet as shown in here, uh, there are some resources in your private subnet and you need to connect to them. What you can do is you can create a NAT gateway. Uh, there is another appliance. Amazon provides you that appliance and you assign a public IP address. That is this uh, icon is for an elastic IP. So the NAT gateway is created in your public subnet and you allocate an elastic IP and any traffic destined from uh, to the internet from your public or private, you send it to the VPC router and this VPC router will be asked to send the 00 traffic to your NAT gateway and from NAT gateway, it will get out to the internet gateway. So this way, any resource say, uh, accessing the internet will uh, whose uh, those IP address will not be exposed. Only this IP address will be exposed and anybody trying to hack my system will be trying to hit my NAT gateway only and they will not be able to see what is behind the NAT gateway, how many instances are behind the NAT gateway and the entire world will see only this IP address. I might have some uh, thousand resources uh, contacting the internet through the single NAT gateway. So that is what we are going to see now. Let us go ahead and set up this NAT gateway right now in the VPC console. So before doing that in the console, just an animated way of uh, seeing that in a broader way, what are the steps that we are going to do? Um, I've just simplified the image here. There is a public subnet and then there is a private subnet. And the first thing is uh, have a internet gateway with a route to 000, that is outbound internet access. So the first thing you do is you go ahead and set up your uh, NAT gateway. Uh, I mean the route table from here and then send that all the 00 traffic from your private to your public as shown here and then you create a NAT gateway here and then assign an elastic IP to that or a public IP to that and create a routing table uh, saying that anything from uh, private that is just kind of what 000 so create a target and then send it to the target as NAT instance. So this will ensure that uh, your private instances can access your internet. So this is the demo that we are going to do now and we already have our uh, custom VPC. We already have our private and public subnets. We have our uh, EC2 instances also running. All we have to do is go ahead and attach a NAT gateway there. So let us go ahead and do that. We are back in our uh, VPC dashboard and on the left hand side, you will find something called as a NAT gateway. Of course, there are two ways to doing it is one is Amazon provided NAT gateway and there is something called as an NAT instance is also there. Amazon provides an AMI for that, a community AMI. And the difference is that is NAT gateways are provided as a service and they have more uh, fault tolerance and the service level support is there. But if you go ahead and create your AMI, like another EC2 instance, you are responsible for maintaining the high availability, fault tolerance, all those things and upgrading the NAT gateway whenever the kernel changes. But if you go ahead and use this NAT gateways that is provided by Amazon by default, you pay a little extra money for this, but uh, it is worth paying it because uh, the management part of the gateway is taken care of by themselves. And it is asking me which subnet I want to choose. I want to carefully choose it in my public subnet. And I'm going to choose a public subnet 1B. Where is it? Public subnet 1B. And then uh, whether I have an elastic IP already. No, I don't have an elastic IP. So all I have to do is just go ahead and create an elastic IP and automatically it will get created and it will pick up the value and show it here. Click on NAT gateway. So now my NAT gateway is created and it gives me a prompt saying I need to edit my routing tables. I can click on this, but I don't want to do that. I'll show you. In case you forget it doing it here, you can go to your routing tables. It's, uh, you can see here the status is pending. It is Amazon is spinning up the instance on the background and creating it uh, in this public IP address. Uh, I'm associating all these parameters to my NAT gateway now. 
So while it is going ahead and doing it, let us go ahead and update our route tables for our private subnets. And if I go to my route table, you can see here there is only one default route and then the route that I created for internet traffic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another route. Internet for private subnets. I'm just going to ensure I'm in the correct VPC. Create. And I'm just going to, so it's asking me which subnets I want. I'm going to edit and add my private subnets here. So private is this one, 1A and 1B. You see here, as of now, currently they are in the main route table, but I'm going to disassociate from the main and associate in the custom one we just now created. Click on save. And you can see the number here changed to two in a short while once it finished the processing. Okay, both my private are here. Next step is adding the route, edit. Destination is 000, that is for our internet. And I'm going to give NAT access now. So my Private instances can connect to the internet uh, by the NAT gateway. Now, let us go ahead and check it out whether this is the truth and let me connect to it in my PuTTY terminal and see if I can ping Google or uh, install some packages. I've just copied the keys to my uh, private server. So I'm in mean, the public server, so I should be able to connect to my uh, uh, private instance from my public instance. So let us go ahead and do that. So my, I copied the SSH keys to T key and then the user is going to be easy to have an user and let us get the public IP address from the console. So we got the IP address and we should be getting connected if I put a S now. You can see here we were in 10.81.1.15 and we are now in 10.81.2.123 and remember we have already set up the NAT gateway so if I go ahead and do ping google.com it should work by default. And if I go ahead and remove the NAT routing and uh, we will come back and see here, it will not work. So let us just uh, leave it as it is. Here, this is the route table that ensures that my private servers can connect to the internet. If I go ahead and edit this, and let me go ahead and just remove that NATing, click on save and Mostly it is real time, as I say, most of the cases are real time, but we need to give it uh, some amount of reasonable time to propagate as well. Let me go back to my server now. So I just terminated the previous ping session and then initiated another ping session just now. And you can see here, I'm in the private server. I'm also in the 10.82.123 series server and my ping is not working. In other words, it doesn't have internet access. And that shows uh, that the NAT gateway is the one which is giving uh, the server internet level access. So if I go ahead and enable it again, just go ahead, edit here, add a route 10.0.0, NAT, click on save. And you can see here, my ping is started to roll automatically once I enable the route table. So that is how you set up a NAT instance in your uh, servers and connect your private instances also to the internet by putting them securely behind a NAT instance. So it is not just ping, I can go ahead and install packages like m install httpd, anything I can do and it will work. So doing m install, I can do curl google.com, it will get the Google homepage for me. And if you do curl, this is what Google is going to send you. The document has been moved. Go ahead and try that. If you have any questions, let me know.